God has come to your place to visit you. And he will do something wonderful in your life. Are you there? Where are you? Raise up those hands. Those hands are anointed and blessed. Keep up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight and bless your name. We know that you are the God of wonders, the God of creation, the God of power, God of mercy. And you are the God that shows mercy to all your people. I pray that without exception tonight, your blessing will come upon everyone. I pray that you save those who are sinners. And as they seek your face, I pray, Lord, they'll find your salvation in Jesus' name. They'll find your mercy. They'll find your forgiveness. They'll find eternal life. And I pray, Lord, they'll be registered in heaven. That souls are saved tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, you touch those who are sick. Roll their sicknesses away. Break every yoke tonight. And destroy the works of the devil. Do wonders here tonight, Lord. Visit your people. And do something unforgettable in every life. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Give me a good, good KB. Amen. Before you sit down, God bless you. You can sit down. I'm looking at one verse of scripture Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I will read him from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Those two words there come now. There's an invitation from the Lord. Because he wants to have a partition in your life. Notice those two words. Number one, invitation. Number two, impartation. If God is inviting anyone, it's for a purpose. He wants to do something. He wants to achieve something in your life. That's why he says, come. And he says, come now. He gives you an invitation. He sees your condition where you are. He sees your poverty where you are. He sees your sorrow where you are. He knows about your sickness. He knows about your tears. He knows about your challenges. He is our creator. With him, all things are possible. Is a mighty God. And he says, is there anything too hard for me? And because the situation of your life, the condition of your life, is very easy for God to deal with. And he knows you cannot have solution any other place. And he knows that tonight is the night of your solution. The night of your salvation. The night of the power of God. And the night when it will roll your mountains away. That's why he has invited you today. And he says come. And then he says you come now. That this is your time. That today is your day. And he says it is now, now, now you are going to come. He gives you an invitation. It's an open invitation. It's a timely invitation. And it's a personal invitation for you. And as you respond to that, the invitation will turn to impartation. It will impart something in your life. Something in your soul. It will give you something you'll never lose. Something you cannot miss. Something you cannot forget. A miracle. A wonder, the miracle of salvation. He will forgive your sins tonight. Am I talking to somebody there today? He will forgive your sins tonight. He will change your life. That's what he imparts. He imparts forgiveness. He imparts righteousness. He imparts eternal life. 
he imparts salvation. The impartation of his healing. Impartation of his deliverance. Impartation of breaking the yoke. Impartation of working a miracle in your life. Tonight is going to be a wonderful night for you. What are you there? He will heal your body. Those blind eyes will open. The lame will rise up and walk. The mighty power of God will hold your life and shatter everything that is disturbing your life. I'm talking to you tonight on God's invitation for a great impartation. God's invitation for a great impartation. I'm reading that verse now fully. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. It says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Don't your sins be as scarlet? They shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Then he tells him, verse 19, if you respond to that invitation, if you answer that call of God, say, yes, Lord, here I am. I know you are calling me, and I am coming to you. If you give a positive answer, I will say, yes, Lord, I come. You told me to come now, I come. You said I shall come now, I come at this time. It says, if you will do that, and you will give response, a positive response. It says, if you be willing and obedient, he shall eat the good of the land. Willing and obedient. Willing and obedient. When you hear the word of God, when you hear the voice of God, when you hear the invitation of God, and you know he wants to do something wonderful in your life. The way to connect with that wonderful scene. And the way to connect with that salvation. The way to connect with that healing. Is that you will respond immediately. And you will say, yes, Lord, I am willing. I am obedient. I answer the call. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. And then you do what he tells you to do. If you be willing and obedient... Ye shall eat the good of the land. That means a miracle will come to you. That means your salvation will come to you. That means deliverance will come to you. If ye be willing and obedient. Personal willingness. You're not waiting for other people. You're not looking here and there. Any other person responding? Any other person yielding? Any other person giving his life to the Lord? That doesn't concern you. If you in particular be willing and you're obedient to his call that he tells you to come and you truly come, he says then you will eat, you will have, you will possess the good of the land. In this land of the living, the goodness of God will come into your life. Because of the impartation that he comes, that he comes to give unto you. God's invitation for a great impartation. As we look at that passage I read to you now, there are three things you are going to notice there. Number one, a gracious call from the merciful God. A gracious call. He calls you by grace. You do not merit his call. How could you merit his call? You are a sinner. All human beings are sinners. The people that have not tasted Calvary, they are sinners. All have seen that come short of the glory of God. You know your sin. You know your evil. You know your darkness. You know your waywardness. All I've seen that come short of the glory of God. God is holy. God is pure. God is perfect. You are imperfect. And it is grace for the holy God to call the unrighteous man, the unrighteous woman. 
It is the grace of God for a perfect God to call somebody like you totally imperfect. And it is the grace of God for somebody so high, high in heaven, to call you so low down there, a human being, a man or a woman. A gracious call from the merciful God. Number two, there is great cleansing by our mighty God. A great cleansing. It says, I'll wash you. I will cleanse you. I will purge you. I will purify you. I will so cleanse you, I'll make you as white as snow. And as white as wool. That means then, as you come, it's going to impart righteousness in your life. It's going to impart forgiveness in your life. And total freedom in your life. That's why it says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. It says, though your sins be as red as crimson. And then it says, or as scarlet. It says, they shall be as white as snow. It also says, they shall be as white as wool. He wants to cleanse you tonight. He's going to cleanse you. I said he's going to cleanse you. And then all that dirt he will take away from your life. All that defilement he'll take away from your life. All that evil sin he'll take away from your life. He takes the guilt away. He takes the condemnation away. It takes all the sin that is soiled, takes all that away from your life. A great cleansing by our mighty God. That's number three now, and it's a great kill. A glorious kill. A wonderful kill by the marvelous God. He can heal your sickness. He can take away your infirmity. It can open your blind eyes. It can make the lip to rise and walk. It can open up those deaf ears. And the dumb tongue, it will lose everything. Because it's a marvelous God. A miracle walking God. And it can hold on hold your life. And then everything that ought not to be there, he'll drive everything away. That evil spirit will run away from your life. That demon will leave you here tonight. All the trouble, all the challenges. The Lord will take everything away tonight. You will be free. Somebody there said you'll be free. Free from sin. Free from sickness. Free from satanic affliction. Because he is a good God. And a great God. And there's a great kill that it brings to your life today. It will happen. Somebody is going to receive a miracle there. I said somebody there is going to receive a miracle. It will come upon your life in Jesus' name. God's invitation for a great impartation. Look at point number one now. A gracious call from the merciful God. Look at verse 18. It says, come now. It's surprising that God is calling us to come. It's surprising he can call a person like you. You know the rich people of the world? They look at the poor. They say, stay by yourself. Here is the God who is rich in glory. And is calling the one that is poor on earth. Sometimes when somebody is wanting something very clean. And you see a child, you see a boy, you see a girl. And it's very dirty and defiling. You want to keep away. You don't want that boy to soil your good clothes. Here is the pure God, the holy God, the righteous God of heaven. 
and is calling you in particular. And you know how dirty you are. You know how sinful you are. You know how defiled you are. And this holy God is calling the righteous man. Some people think, I'm so bad. I cannot come to God. God is so great. I'm so small. I cannot come to God. That's the grace of God. That although he's great and wonderful, he's calling the one that is dirty, defiled, and small. And he says, come now. He wants to do you good. He's rich in glory. He's rich in mercy. He's rich in love. He's rich in everything you want. And here you are, and you are suffering. And he can solve your problem. I said he will solve your problem. And tonight, solution has come. He will solve that problem tonight. Don't worry about the sorrow. He'll take the sorrow away. Don't worry about the guilt. He'll take that guilt away. About the condemnation. He'll take the condemnation away. He loves you more than any man on earth can love you. He loves you more than any father on earth can love you. He loves you more than any mother on earth can love you. When you've gone astray, when you've done something bad, sometimes you are so bad. The father said, I don't want to see you. Sometimes you are so bad that daddy says, don't use my name. Sometimes you are so bad that he says, don't ever come to this house anymore. But you know, God is more kind than your earthly father. God is more loving than your earthly father. God is greater than your earthly father. And when everybody has rejected you, when everybody is looking down on you, when everybody is making you feel dirty and sinful, he says, I call you. I want you to come. I'm the one to cleanse you. I'm the one to forgive you. I'm the one to change your life. Because of that, he says, come now. And it is the greatest wisdom come ever manifest. That you'll say, God is calling me. Almighty is calling me. And the one who can change my life is calling me. I am going to him. I am going to him. What do you think? You are in your house. And the king in the land. He wants to see you. Instead of sending somebody just ordinary person to you. He says the closest person to him to you. And he says go there and knock at his door. And call him. And say the king is calling him. I want to give him land. I want to give him money. I want to give him riches. I want to give him resources. And he says the closest person. The most trusted person. In his kingdom unto you. He says go and call him. How will you respond? And then a person knocks at your door. And you open the door. You say, yes, what do you want? He says, the king of the land has favored you. I am the next person to him. And he has told me to come and call you. He is inviting you. He is so rich. Anything you need is going to give to you. You will immediately pack your load. The king is calling me. The rich king is calling me. The mighty one is calling me. The good one is calling me. You are not going to allow anything to hinder you. All the programs you have before you, you abandon everything. Anybody trying to tie down, you abandon everything. Anybody telling you, you are not of the same tribe as that king, you forget about that. And then you come. And then you come before the king. You bow before the king. What am I telling you? God is the king of the whole universe. He wanted to bless you. 
instead of just sending somebody to you, he has sent the closest person to him. And he sent him to this world. His name is Jesus. And God sent Jesus Christ here. That's why many times, if you have read your Bible, Jesus always said, he that sent me. The one who sent me. God sent Jesus to you. To come and invite you. That's why Jesus said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, and I will give you redemption, and I will give you forgiveness, and I will give you salvation, and I will give you eternal life. That's why Isaiah is telling us, and he says, Come, not tomorrow, come, not next year, come, not when you become older, come, not when you're about to die. Come, come now. I, I've seen some people that got called in the Bible. And he told them the same thing he's telling you now. He called a man called Moses. And he told Moses, come now. I have something for you. I want to impart something in your life. I want to make use of you. Come now. And that man came. He came to God. And God imparted life unto him. And God imparted power unto him. That man was never the same again. Jesus came in the New Testament. And then he saw Peter. He said, come. Come after me. And it is now. And all those people he called. Immediately, they left every other scene. And they came. Tonight is your turn. Am I talking to somebody there today? I said, tonight is your turn. God is calling me. Almighty God is calling me. The creator of the heavens and the earth is calling me. The one who wants to do me good is calling me. He wants to save me is calling me. He wants to forgive me is calling me. He wants to change my life is calling me. He wants to turn me around is calling me. He wants to do good in my life. He's calling me. I will answer. Somebody there, I will answer. Somebody there, I will answer. I will not allow any thoughts to disturb me. I will answer. I will not allow any friend to drag me down. I will answer. I will not allow any relation, any cousin, any uncle. Any brother, any sister, any junior, any senior, to hold me down, I will answer. He's going to give me the riches of the kingdom. And he's going to give me something I never knew, something I never heard. He's calling you today. And you say, yes, I come. Yes, I come. He says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. When he says you shall come, he's saying to move out of where you are. He says, come out of your past life. And come into a present new life. It's calling you out of darkness. It's calling you to the light. It's calling you out of sin. It's calling you to the Savior. It's calling you out of evil. And it's calling you to righteousness. It's calling you out of your weakness. It's calling you into a strength. It's calling you out of your suffering. And it's calling you out of pure joy. And if you are wise, the wise man will come. The wise woman will come. You will not allow any idea or ideology to hinder you. You will not allow any thought or anything to hinder you. You will not allow people around you to hinder you. And you will not allow your own mistaken pride. And you know sometimes uh, when God is calling us, He's calling us to a feast. 
He's calling us to a feast. He says, come and dine. And then we'll say, I ate last week. Uh-huh. But today, how about today? Sometimes, God is calling you. And he's saying, come unto me. I go to a good church. You are going to allow the good church you go to to hinder you from getting something from God? Come unto me. I'm a nice person. I'm happy you are a nice person. I'm happy you are a good person. You are going to allow your being nice to hinder you from coming for the riches of the kingdom. Come unto me, say I give money to the beggars. Of course, of course, you should do that. It's a wonderful thing for you to help the people that are poor. Are you going to allow the good things you are doing to hinder you from coming to the Lord? It's calling you today. Good or bad is calling you. Nice or naughty is calling you. Near or far is calling you. I say, yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. Where is the person I'm talking to? Yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. What's he going to do when you come? What are you going to do when you come? I come to point number two now. It's a great cleansing by our mighty God. There is nothing so dirty that this mighty God cannot wash clean. There is nothing so defiled that this mighty God cannot recreate. There is nothing so, so dirty and so defiled and so dark inside the mud that he cannot pull up and then he'll purge and purify. He will take the vilest of all sinners and make him and make her the most victorious of all saints. That's his specialty. He specializes in that. Your plate is dirty. He will wash that place and make it new as if that plate was never dirty before. Your clothes are dirty. He will take those clothes and he'll wash that cloth as if it is brand new. You see something? When God forgives us, as you come unto him, he is so great and mighty. He will take every sin away from your life. Every stain away from your life. Every death or defilement away from your life. And then he will forgive your sin and they will never be remembered against you anymore. He will set you free from the sin. He will separate you from your sin. He will take sin out of you and take you out of sin. In your conscience, it will be like you never seen before. In the record of heaven, it will be like you never seen before. In the presence of the angels, it will be like you never seen before. In the presence of the Almighty God Himself, He will look at you as a saint as if you never seen before. And it is by His grace, it's by His love, it's by what He did on the cross of Calvary. That's why He said, Come now. He says, If you are going to enjoy this, if you are going to benefit in this, he says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. What does that mean? Let us reason together. What does that mean? Let us reason together. How do you understand that? Let us reason together. He says, let us talk about this heart to heart. Give me the reason why you believe I must cleanse you. I must wash you. I must forgive you. He says, let us reason together. I come to God now. And we're going to reason together. I said, you called me. And I've come. You said, you're going to forgive me. That's why you called me. And now, here I am. I come. 
were reasoning together. I said, you sent Jesus to me. You said, you don't want me to be lost. And he called me. And he said, the father sent him to me. I am poor. I am sinful. I am a nobody. Yet you count me important. And you sent Jesus to come and call me. Because you called me, I come. We're reasoning together. When Jesus came, he died for me on the cross of Calvary. And he said, it is finished. He said, my sins finished. My suffering finished. My sickness finished. My perdition eternity finished. Because he said it is finished, so I come. We're listening together. You said in your word, whosoever comes to me, he may be born on the right hand side. He might have been born on the left hand side. Whosoever comes to me, he might have gone to church before. He might never have come to church before. Whosoever comes to me, he might be an educated man. He might be an illiterate. Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Where is it together? Where is it together? And because you said whosoever will come, you will receive. So I come. You say, I shall come just as I am. I shall not try and turn over a new leaf. I shall not try and make anything better. The way I am, I should come. You will forgive. You will do the cleansing. You will do the change of life. I come. We're listening together. He says, come now. And let us listen together, says the Lord. He says, when you come, whosoever covers a sin shall not prosper. Because the person who covers a sin is insulting God. He's saying, God, I know you cannot see what he said you can see. I know you don't know what he thought you know. I know you have never seen this, so I'm going to cover it away from you. It's, it's insulting God. When the king invited you, he didn't call you to come and insult him. He called you to understand that he's the God of all knowledge. He knows everything you have done. So there's no point. There's no point and you're coming and say, God, I am a good man. I'm better than that other one. I'm better than that other one. I do this, I do that. You're insulting God. You're thinking he does not know what actually he knows. So, you will not do that. But he that confesses and forsakes his sin shall have mercy. You come and you say, this is who I am. I am not as good as people think I am. I am not as good as the public people project me to be. I am not as good as the principal of our college thinks I am. I am not as good as the pastor in our church says I am. You know me, I know myself. Lord, I come. He that confesses and forsakes his sin shall prosper. That's why he says, come. Let us reason together. Tell me the truth. Tell me the right thing. Confess your sin. And depart away from your sin. And then he says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Tonight, he will wash you clean. He will forgive your sin. He will take everything away. He will take the condemnation away. What's condemnation? Is Satan knocking you on the head every time. You're a bad man. You're a bad woman. Knocking you on the head every time. You're, you're an evil personality. 
I know you are bad. I know you are my servant. I know you are my slave. There's condemnation. But when you come to God tonight, all that knocking of the devil, all that condemnation of the devil, the Almighty God will take away. He will set you free. You will look around. You cannot see those things anymore. You cannot see those evil things anymore. And though they be like crimson, though they be like crimson, then it says, they shall be as white as wool. And if you are willing and obedient tonight, how does that, what does that mean to be willing and obedient? You stand up and say, I'm going to Jesus. I'm going to the Lord because he's calling me. I leave all my sins behind, he's calling me. I leave the condemnation behind, he's calling me. I leave all that guilt behind, he's calling me. I'm going to plunge my face in the blood of the Lamb that cleanses me. Willing and obedient. And then you will partake of the goodness of the kingdom of God. Number one is a gracious call. And he's calling you. And you know you don't merit it. It's because of his mercy he's calling you. Number two, there's a great cleansing. And it's going to cleanse you. It's going to wash you. It's going to take condemnation away. Because he's mighty to save. It's mighty to cleanse. It's mighty to forgive. It's mighty to change your life. Mighty to transform your life. And now the great cure. He'll take your sickness away. Give me a good amen. It can be amen. Because it says, if you be willing and obedient. You know what it means to be willing? Look at that blind man. He knew he could not open his own blind eyes. He's gone everywhere. They could not do it. But now he hears about Jesus. That God has sent Jesus to bring light into his darkness. And he's willing and obedient. And he comes to Jesus. And he says, I accept that you are the only one to give sight to the blind and to give light in darkness. He's willing and obedient. He will have the impartation. The blind eyes will open. Look at that lame man. He's tried everything. He tried to walk. He could not walk. Tried to get a miracle. He could not get that. And he went to the people that might be able to arrange the bones and fix the bones. They were not able to do that. Eventually he gave up. And he sat on a wheelchair. And he said, that's where I will sit till I die. And then he heard of Jesus. Who came from heaven. That the creator God of heaven sent him. To go and do what God did at the beginning of creation. And to raise up that lame man. And the man said, I hear of Jesus. He can do everything. He can get me out of this wheelchair. He can turn the crutches out of my hand. He has the power to recreate my life. And he believes on Jesus Christ. Tonight, he will stand up from that wheelchair. He will throw away the crutches tonight. He will be well. He will be strong. A man that is uh, incurable comes to the Lord. Why is he coming? If you are willing and you are obedient. Look at that woman. She spent everything she had on the, on the physicians, on the doctors. She was nothing better. She's been bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. She's lean and emaciated. It's like everything is wrong in her body. And then she's almost giving up. Even if she hears of the next doctor, 
She cannot go there. She spent everything that she had. And then now she hears that God has sent Jesus Christ to cure the incurable. That if anyone will come, if the blind will come, he'll heal them. If the lame will come, he'll heal them. If the incurable will come, he'll kill them. And then he said, I'll be willing and obedient. And then he co she comes. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I am willing. I'm obedient. And she touches the hem of his garment. And then that blood will stop immediately. And that incredible disease tonight is taken away in Jesus' name. You have been a sinner, but he wants to give you salvation. I heard that somebody came to Christ. Everybody knew him to be a sinner. He himself knew he was a sinner. In fact, when he came to Jesus, they were telling Jesus, that man is a sinner. That man is a sinner. Is a public can. And all is a can of worms. Everybody in the public knows that. And then Jesus said, Today is salvation come to this house. Because that man was willing and obedient. He was willing to have salvation. That's why he ran ahead before the crowd. That's why he climbed up a tree. That's why I wanted to see Jesus Christ. That's why he got that salvation. It is your turn tonight. I said it is your turn tonight. Why are you there? He will save your soul. He will forgive your sin. If you're willing and obedient, you'll have the goodness of the Lord tonight in the land of the living. He will convert your soul. He will kill your body. He will cleanse your life. He will change everything completely. He's calling you. The Lord is calling you. You will answer. I said the Lord is calling you. You will answer. He says come now. When are you going to come? Come now. When are you going to have salvation? Come now. When are you going to have forgiveness? Come now. When are you going to have the cleansing that will wash you whiter than snow and make you as white as wool? Come now. When are you going to be healed? I said, when are you going to be healed? Come now. When are you going to eat the good of the land? Come now. When are you going to have eternal life? Come now. When is he going to make you a candidate of heaven? Now, come now. It's a merciful God. God does not bear grudges. God does not say, I remember what he did. God does not bear grudges. I remember what she did. He says, no, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. As you confess and forsake your sin, and I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will take all those sins away. You will never be the same again. Are you coming? I said, are you coming? I said, are you coming? When? When? Come now. It's bad and eyes closed. He wants to have you in his kingdom. He wants to splash his love on you. He wants to pass a salvation unto you. He wants to wash you clean. He wants to cleanse you as white as wool, whiter than snow. He wants to do it now. And he says, you must come now. It's bowed and eyes closed. If you are coming for that cleansing, if you are coming to God because he called you, if you are coming for that forgiveness because he called you, 
if you will not give any excuse because God is calling you and say yes Lord I come wherever you are you raise up your hand there praise the Lord wonderful raise up that hand Lord I come raise up that hand Lord I come raise up that hand and then you will stand up you will stand up you identify yourself before the Lord say Lord it's me Lord is me Lord is me I come I come and the free and the forgiveness is free the cleansing is free the salvation is free it says come now if you are coming take whatever you have there come to the front right here Whatever you have there, just take it in hand and don't leave anything behind and just come to the Lord right in front here. It's calling you, the word come is a word of motion. Come. Come. Members of choir, come back. Counselors, come back here. It's calling you, it says come. Anywhere you are, you're raising up your hand and you're standing up, it calls you to come. Take your step of faith and say, Lord, I am willing. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. If ye be willing and obedient, that salvation will come to you. That forgiveness will come to you. Yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. Willing and obedient, it will forgive your sin. You are willing, you are obedient. You are not looking at anybody around you. You're not thinking about whatever they say. You're not thinking about whatever they think. You say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. You will leave that place where you are. Because it says, come now. You're doing this in obedience to the Lord. In obedience to his invitation. A great invitation. God's own invitation. So as to give you a great impartation. Young man, God is waiting for you to come. Young lady, God is waiting for you to come. Papa, God is waiting for you to come. Mama, God is waiting for you to come. You feel you're a good person? Come all the same. You feel you're a nice person? Come all the same. I do good here, I do good here, I do good. It's calling you. It says you are not an angel. You're not as perfect as an angel. Maybe you're good. You should have been excellent. Maybe you're nice. You should have been like an angel. And you were not like an angel. Therefore, it says, come. And if you are bad, of course, it's calling you. He'll turn that which is bad to good. He'll cleanse that which is dirty and make it clean. He'll purge and purify. He will forgive you and pardon your sin. He will set you free. Come. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. As you come, just close your eyes and pray to the Lord. And say, Lord, I come. I'm a sinner. Lord, I come. I confess my sin. Lord, I come. I want a change in my life. Lord, I come. I want your forgiveness in my soul, in my spirit, Lord, I come. I want the comfort of salvation, Lord, I come. I want the assurance that my sins are taken away, Lord, I come. Tell him I come. Tell him you come. Tell him you have come for salvation. You come for eternal life. Tell him you come on the basis of his promise. And because he has promised you that he will forgive you, that's why you've come. He'll so take away your sin, he'll not remember them anymore against you. Thank you, Lord, for receiving me. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for salvation. Thank him, thank him. Jesus died for you to take all those sins away. I'm going to pray with you now. Raise up those hands as I pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of your promise, and we thank you because you cannot fail. 
Thank you because you will not fail. Thank you, Lord, because we know whatever you said, you are going to fulfill. I pray for all those who have come to Christ in reality. And they come in faith. Standing upon the promise of God that cannot fail. I pray you forgive them in Jesus' name. Cleanse them in Jesus' name. Wash them whiter than snow in Jesus' name. And forget all their sins. That they will not be remembered against them anymore. I pray you give them new life even now. Lord, give them new life even now. Bear witness in their hearts, the children of God. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. And you give me another amen. God bless you. Our counselors are there. Members of the choir and the ushers and the counselors. They'll give you a sheet of paper. And they are identifying with you. That you have come for salvation. And that God in faithfulness has given you that salvation. You have come so that God will forgive you. And the true God and the faithful God, the merciful God has forgiven you. Counselors, uh, very quickly give them the paper. And let's uh, hurry up and finish up on this. And after this, I'll be coming back to pray for those who are sick. Tonight is the night of your healing. The night of your miracle. Incurables are cured tonight. I thought KB will say amen. Praise the Lord. I can't hear KB. I said praise the Lord. Your miracle is coming. What are you there? Your miracle will locate you right now. Whatever your challenges are, whatever your problems are, the Lord is going to touch you. Tonight is the night of solution, the night of healing, the night of miracle is coming your way. Where are you there? You raise up your hand. You lay your hand where you have the challenge, the problem, or the sickness. And then we're going to pray. Remember if you are willing and obedient. Ye shall eat the good of the land. It's an unfailing promise of God. An unfailing power of God will work in your life right now. Identify the problem. Then you lay one hand on the problem. If you are blind, your eyes will open. If you are lame, you rise up and walk after the prayer. You have incurable disease, incurable ailment after the prayer. After the final amen, you'll find the miracle has come. So I pray now. And when you hear that final, final amen, check up yourself. You'll find a solution, the miracle already there. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because we know you're a mighty God. Which you all think are possible. Your promises are yes and amen. You cannot fail. You will not fail. And we know that tonight you're still mighty and powerful. Lord Jesus, we come in your name. What you did when you were here on earth, that name will do it tonight. We come in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I'm asking, Lord, tonight the anointing will break every yoke. You'll destroy the works of the devil tonight in Jesus' name. I pray for anyone that is having any torment or any affliction, any kind of attack from evil spirits. I command that evil spirit come out in Jesus' name.
all those harassing, tormenting spray walking about in your body, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have any swelling on their body, tumor, fibroid, hernia, whatever. Swelling in the tummy, swelling in the leg, swelling in the head. I command that swelling, get out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have any kind of incurable disease. HIV AIDS, I command you there, be healed now in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, be healed in Jesus' name. That cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. That ulcer, be healed in Jesus' name. Those kidneys that are packed up, come alive in Jesus' name. Diabetes be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have that terrible cough, be healed in Jesus' name. And I pray, O Lord, that the asthma will be healed right now in Jesus' name. Whatever may be the challenge, whatever may be the sickness, I pray, Lord, by your mighty power, Touch and heal them right now. Deliver them right now. Set them free right now. I pray for those who are blind. Lord, I pray you touch those blind eyes. Blind eyes be opened and see clearly in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, Lord, touch their ears and touch their vocal cords. Speak out here now in Jesus' name. And those who are lame in any way, having stroke, on crutches, in a wheelchair, with backbone that is not strong, pain in their joints, I command you pain, get out in Jesus' name. Paralysis, get out in Jesus' name. I send forth the power of God on your body. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Lord, confirm it, Lord. I pray for everyone, Lord. Left, right, center, back, front. Anywhere you are, receive your miracle. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance right now. You are free. You are healed. You are delivered. Lord, confirm it for everyone. I thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. Check up yourself. You'll find it is done. 